All right, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to our guest presenter today. Emeka Ogu is one of our partners with PeopleJoy. Uh, they provide a variety of different services for nonprofits and employers to help with helping their employees with uh, student loans. Um, this is an area that, it, you know, in the press has an active amount of um, things going on. And I know many of us have uh, employees or family that are kind of wrestling with the whole student loan space. So I asked Emeka to give us a kind of an overview of what's going on and what we should be either thinking about or advising employees around student loans. Emeka? Thank you, Kevin. And good morning, everybody. Again, my name is Emeka Ogu, the founder and CEO of PeopleJoy. Uh, we help employers such as yourselves uh, attract and retain talent using student loans assistance as an employee benefit. Uh, a quick about me, I based in Philadelphia. I started my career at Wall Street at Merrill Lynch, uh, where I oversaw $315 billion uh, in investments in our investment management and guidance team. I have a, a bachelor's degree in engineering from Rutgers University and an MBA from Harvard Business School. And I started PeopleJoy after my wife and I graduated with a combined uh, $400,000 in student loans. So I know the experience and pain point of student debt, uh, both as an employee uh, and the pain points and challenges of struggling to save for retirement, uh, get married and buy a home, and as well as an employer and the challenges of recruiting and retaining top talent, especially folks that have come out of, out of uh, college. And today we're going to talk about some options that you have as an employer uh, for um, attracting and retaining talent, specifically as a potential student debt. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how student debt impacts today's workforce. And then we're going to talk about the business case uh, for student loan repayment assistance. And I'm going to give you some updates, uh, some things that have changed legislative wise that would make this more enticing as an employer. And again, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat and we'll have time at the end uh, to go over them. So really understanding student debt and the impact on today's uh, workforce, the first thing we want to know is that there are 45 million uh, people in the workforce with student debt uh, with a combined $1.6 trillion uh, of, of student loans. You've probably seen a lot in the news lines, uh, newsletter recently, just in terms of the impact of student debt and how it's impacting uh, today's workforce, the ability to save for retirement and own a home. A uh, common misconception is that this is a Gen Z problem, or this is a problem that goes away uh, once you get out of your 20s. And I'm gonna tell you both as uh, someone who currently still has student debt and is well out of his 20s, uh, this is actually a problem that goes across uh, several generations. In fact, millennials don't actually have the most outstanding student debt. Generation X, those born between 1965 and 1979, actually have the most outstanding student debt followed by the baby boomer generation. So contrary to popular belief, millennials come out actually as the third group of, of you know, generation wise that has student loans. And when you look at baby boomers, you have folks who uh, after the great recession, they went back to school to get another degree. You also have parents that take out parent plus loans. So they borrowed money uh, for their for their children to go to school. And so you've got people in various generations. This is a cross-generational problem. It doesn't, it's not isolated to just one individual generation who are struggling with student loans. And so the reason why that's important is that many of us may have, I talk to some employers who have older workforces and they say, well, I don't think student debt is a problem in my workforce. And it's, if you've got employees who've gone to college or have kids that have gone to college, uh, student debt is a problem in your workforce. So it's just something to, to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is how much your average employee is paying uh, on their student loans per month. And this is, again, this is after tax dollars. So currently the average student loan payment is a little under $400 a month. That is an increase of $166 uh, since 2005. And that's, again, after tax expenses that your employee is paying every single month uh, towards their student loan. I mentioned earlier in our conversation the impact that student debt has on buying a home, which again, for many Americans, home ownership is the path to, to wealth building uh, and wealth generation and something that they can pass down to family members uh, later on in, for, you know, as, they, as they get older and retire. For the average college debt holder with $37,000, which is the national uh, average for student debt, uh, there's 
that ends up being a 7.7 year delay in their path to home ownership. So for the average American with student debt, they're going to buy a home almost eight years later than someone without student debt because of that challenge of paying that monthly payment of $400 uh, every single month. When it comes to retirement, it's even worse. Uh, a study done by TIAA uh, in collaboration with MIT found that 73% of borrowers with student loans are reported putting off maxing out their retirement savings, saying they expect to begin increasing their contributions once their student loans are paid off. So it's not only delaying the path to home ownership, it's delaying uh, the path to uh, saving for retirement and building that nest egg uh, for when you stop working. So um, the obvious answer for why you would want to offer student loan assistance to your employees, in my opinion, is if you have the means to do it, it's the right thing to do. Uh, seven out of 10 people entering the workforce have student loans. Uh, for many of us as employers, we require our employees to have a college degree, even if that college degree has no relation to what we're actually hiring them for. And so if you're asking your employees to uh, go to school, they're accruing the, their debt to be the best employee for you. It's the right thing to do to, to again, if you have the means for it, to assist them uh, with, with uh, helping pay off their student loans. But that being said, there's a number of other reasons as well. While when we talk to employers, uh, they're offering this. And one of the things that we want to mention is that it's a tight labor market. Uh, we're increasingly hearing from employers that it's an employee's market, especially for top talent. It's harder for employers to hire new talent. It's harder to retain employees, costing more compensation and benefits. And in, with the pandemic, employees are requesting to work from home. So if you can't offer uh, one or more of these uh, things to your employees, uh, it's getting harder and harder to stay competitive in the job market. Internally, that's been leading to HR burnout. Uh, we have a lot of folks in human resources who, on one end, they have to be the employee advocate. So it's their job to communicate with senior management on what their employees are looking for and what they want in order to hire and keep them. At the same time, they have to be accountable for business metrics. They have to make sure that the business is profitable. And so there's this push-pull where a lot of uh, HR teams are operating within budget cuts. So you've got a tight labor market and that's leading to HR, HR burnout. Another reason that you wanna consider offering student loan assistance benefits is that it allows you to become the employer of choice. Uh, many employees are citing that they want to work for an employer uh, that offers financial wellness benefits. Uh, by becoming, offering financial, unique financial wellness benefits, you're demonstrating to your employee that you're a value-based employer. Um, and I'm speaking from personal experience, look, we can all compete on salary or try to compete on salary. But what I've learned, uh, you know, in the last eight years of running my own business is that my best employees are the ones who are, are working with us uh, based on values. And you show your, demonstrate your values based on not only practicing what you're preaching and how you treat your employees and giving them pathways to succeed and feel that they're in a safe work environment, but also the benefits that you offer them to show that, hey, in addition to I know what you're dealing with, you want retirement benefits and healthcare, there's other things that you're struggling with. It may be student home benefits, it may be pet insurance, but just showing them that you see that they have a life outside of work and you wanna be a part of that in a meaningful way. And I found that those employees are the ones that take, tend to stay the longest with us versus employees that we're just hiring based on set that are just there for salary. There's always going to be an employer that can come and beat us on salary, but I'm confident that employers are not going to beat us on value and our unique benefits and our value proposition and our culture and why. And that's what we compete on. And that's demonstrated in our, in our benefits. Um, but again, in this Morgan Stanley study, they found that, you know, employers are now, employees are feeling more comfortable getting financial support at work from a financial professional. So they want their employer to be a, a partner with them when it comes to figuring out student loans, when it comes to figuring out retirement, when it comes to balancing a budget, 60% said that they would be more likely to stay at a job that provided useful financial wellness programs. This goes back to being that value-based employer, uh, recognizing that your employees have uh, issues and challenges outside of work. And 78% of employees with high financial stress say that it distracts them at work. Uh, this is something that we've probably all seen. If you had an employee that's uh, dealing with uh, financial distress, they might you know, be dealing with debt, they might be going through a divorce, et cetera, but you've seen 
many of you have probably seen that in the workplace, in the workforce, where they're just not themselves. They're not themselves at work. And so what that leads to is lost productivity for you, lost revenue for you, um, as well as stress for your employee. And that can permeate uh, throughout, throughout the organization. So becoming an employer of choice by offering unique financial model solutions, again, it allows you to attract and retain talent. It's the right thing to do. And it allows you to compete on something else uh, besides salary, uh, which again, if you can, is what you want to do. Another thing uh, that we wanted to talk about today is just some of the tax-friendly student loan relief policies. So when we started PeopleJoy back in 2016, uh, employers that wanted to help pay off their student loan, their employee student loans, uh, had to pay taxes on that. So any contribution you as an employer made to your employee student loans was considered additional income. Your employee had to pay state and federal taxes on it. And you as an employer had to pay wage taxes on those contributions. Uh, during the pandemic, student loan repayment assistance was actually made tax deductible. So you as an employee can now exclude up to $5,250 of employer contributions uh, per employee uh, to a student loan repayment assistance. And this, this uh, tax exemption is in effect through 2025. Uh, but will likely be extended and made permanent beyond that. And so you also won't have to pay uh, the FICA tax, which is Social Security Medicare, which currently is around 7.65%. This is a huge benefit because it now puts your contribution as an employer on par with a 401k match or putting money towards an HSA or any other number of available pre-tax contributions uh, that you, you may provide your employees. Uh, and they no longer, as employees, have to pay uh, federal or state taxes on those benefits. So again, talent, knowing that seven out of 10 of them are coming into the workforce with debt, and that, uh, again, baby boomers and Gen X are the generations with the highest amount of student debt, uh, having a benefit like this uh, is a great way to attract and retain talent. And we'll go into more detail in the presentation on how some, some employers uh, have structured uh, this. Another uh, tax-friendly student loan relief policy currently in place is that uh, the, since the pandemic happened back in March 2020, student loan payments were suspended. So any borrower, any of your employees with federal loans uh, did not have to make payments on those student loans since March of 2020. And this was uh, implemented initially by the Trump administration and extended by the Biden administration to provide relief uh, so people didn't have to struggle between paying off their loans and paying off rent and also acknowledging that the number of people that, that have lost their job or were struggling to find work uh, during the pandemic. Uh, however, that suspension um, is expected to be lifted come October 1st. So for 45 million borrowers, uh, they will once again have to begin making payments come October 1st. If you as an employer are, were able to, you given the timing of when this suspension is going to be lifted, it's a great time timing wise to take advantage of the SLRA tax deduction and provide your employee with relief. Again, uh, for many employees, uh, they're not able to cover even a $400 a month emergency expense. And so many of your employees may not be prepared uh, for that suspension being lifted. And so you being able to step in and provide a contribution, again, is not only the right thing to do if you have the means for it, uh, but is a great way to attract and retain talent. Uh, in many of our employers, we've seen uh, them using SLRA as a way to hire new employees, especially on the, when they're recruiting on the on, on, in campuses and colleges. At, but at the same time with people who are switching careers or mid-career, uh, it's a great tool to have in your back pocket and be able to offer them um, as part of total rewards. So when they're looking at this benefit, uh, they're not only going to be looking at your sal the salary you're offering them, but also those different benefits like the student loan repayment assistance benefit and, and adding that to their total, total comp. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about as far as student loan relief policies is the SECURE 2.0 Act. Um, this act is still pending legislation, so it's got bipartisan approval, uh, but it hasn't been approved yet. Uh, the expectation is that it will be approved in Q4 of this year or early next year, but its passage would allow borrowers to save for retirement uh, using tax-exempt employer contributions to their retirement account while they simultaneously pay down their debt. 
So today, uh, the reason why this is really going to be groundbreaking is that today, you and I as employers, if we wanted to, uh, for example, uh, help our employees save for retirement, we can only put matching dollars into their account, meaning that they have to put a dollar into their retirement account for us to match it. Uh, for your employees that are not able to save for retirement because they have student debt, there really was no means for us to help them besides helping pay off their student loans faster. We, but we could not as employers put money towards their, their uh, 401k, uh, at least not you know, tax exempt wise. What this bill would allow us to do is that for every dollar our employees put towards their student loans, we will actually be able to put a dollar towards their retirement. So in effect, we're still gonna be helping them save for retirement while they're paying off student debt. Um, a couple of companies have done this so far, but it was through private letter ruling. So Abbott Labs was the first employer to offer this and they were able to do it through an IRS private letter ruling. Now, the average IRS private letter ruling is north of $50,000. So my suggestion here is not to go out and try to get a private letter ruling to offer this. It's just to wait. Um, there's a good chance that again, this, get, this gets passed this year. It's got bipartisan approval. so. Um, you know, we're confident this is going to get pushed through. But again, when this bill gets passed, it will allow your employee uh, to, again, pay down their debt and you as their employer to contribute to their retirement uh, so they get the best of both worlds. Uh, and that's something that we're really excited about uh, because it's going to um, uh, really allow employers to, again, be that partner, uh, help attract and retain talent and help over provide overall uh, financial wellness. Uh, Another thing I wanted to address is not on this slide, but there's a lot of talk today about there being loan forgiveness. And we get a lot of employers asking us, well, isn't the government going to wipe away the $1.6 trillion of student debt? Um, you know, my personal thought is that's gonna be a really long shot. Uh, typically in the past when the government has written off 1 trillion plus of debt, uh, it's because, you know, too big to fail uh, situations where the entire economy is going to collapse or is at risk it's with student debt, although uh, it does delay retirement and people saving for homes. Um, there's not a situation where there's going to be a run on the bank if people don't pay off their student loans. However, we do feel that there may be some uh, some level of relief, uh, maybe in the form of $10,000 of student debt. Uh, again, the average borrower has $37,000 of student loans or federal student debt. Uh, and so $10,000 would probably, would forgive about 16% of the of the, 40, the 45 million borrowers, you know, in terms of the number of people who have student loans. Who it would impact the most, if that does happen, are gonna be the people who have less than $10,000 of student debt. And typically those are folks who've gone to school and dropped out. And so, um, and therefore, because they don't have that degree, they haven't been paying off their student loans. And we do see a number of employees who've got $5,000 of student debt and are in default. And, um, you know, it would be great, again, if that legislation does happen, if that debt is forgiven, it would really impact uh, those folks. But again, that bill, um, again, uh, the Biden administration initially said no, that they weren't going to um, offer any forgiveness, but there are, uh, it is being discussed a lot more frequently these days, so more to come on that. But what we do know again today is that the administrative forbearance is expected to be lifted October 1st. So come October 1st, your employees will once again have to start paying for their student loans. If you as an employer uh, wanted to offer, um, help them assist them in paying off their student loans, uh, your contribution will be tax deductible uh, through, um, through uh, uh, 2025. And so um, if you weren't to, you know, interested in offering anything like this, I wanted to have a conversation with us, having to have a conversation. Um, again, what we do at PeopleJoy is we help with student loan repayment assistance if employers want to facilitate that. We also do tuition reimbursement. Um, many employers do that in-house, uh, but we found a lot of employers, you know, especially as you grow and expand, uh, don't want the administrative burden of having to reimburse for tuition. And so that's something that if you wanted to outsource, uh, we could help with at PeopleJoy. And those are both employer contribution models where it's really focused on attracting and retaining talent and it requires you as an employer uh, to make a cash contribution to our student loan repayment assistance or tuition reimbursement. On the other side, we do a lot of work with a loan program assistance and coaching. 
These are more voluntary benefits uh, where we assist employees uh, with identifying different opportunities uh, for loan forgiveness or lower monthly payments, primarily through um, different federal loan programs. Uh, another misconception that I think a lot of bar employers have is that they assume that, you know, for most employees, well, hey, the solution for student debt is just to refinance to a lower interest rate. Uh, the reality is of the 1.6 trillion in student loans, 1.6 trillion, 93% is owed to the federal government. So only 7% of loans are owned by private banks like Citizens Bank, SoFi, et cetera. And so if and typically to want to refinance, you have to have a great credit score. Uh, you have to have a credit score. So think about your employees that just entered the workforce. They won't have a credit score uh, and you have to have a good salary. So again, think about your employees who maybe are making minimum wage or, or their debt to income ratio is high, they don't, won't even have the chance to refinance their student loans. Another thing that most folks don't know is that to take advantage of any of those federal benefits, you have to have a federal loan. So by refinancing to a private loan, you actually forfeit some of those federal subsidies. So it's important when you're talking to your employees that you, one, let them know all their options, and two, provide uh, options in-house so that they're not taken advantage of. Um, one of the, 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 on the presentation a little earlier, they mentioned, I think one of the speakers was talking about how there were companies out there taking advantage of your employees due to certain uh, COVID programs. It's the same thing with student loans. I can't tell you how many calls I get uh, every day with somebody promising me loan forgiveness on my federal loans, and I don't even have federal loans. And so anybody with student loans on this call knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, there's a lot of scammers out there taking advantage of of borrowers, of the 45 million borrowers. And we get calls all the time from people who were borrowers who were taken advantage of and someone promised them loan forgiveness, took their money and just ran. And so I think what we as employers can do is by providing in-house resources, we're giving our employees a trusted resource to go to. So instead of picking up that phone or, or clicking on that email or that, or that clickbait, they actually have an in-house vetted resource that their employer has worked with to answer their questions about the student loans so that they're, they're not taken advantage of. And I mean, I can't tell you the number of times we've had borrowers come up to us and say, I'm, I'm talking to you because my employer, um, that employer, because I've been taken advantage of before to the tune of thousands of dollars um, and, and I still wasn't helped with my student loans. So, uh, it's another thing to, again, consider besides it being the right thing to do is giving your employees a trusted and vetted resource so they don't have to go outside on their own and try to figure uh, this problem out uh, for themselves. And so on the student loan repayment assistance side, again, how it works is we help you pay down your employee student debt or tuition expenses. Uh, the benefit of that for you is that it increases retention, loyalty, and productivity for your employees. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, it's tax exempt. So just to give you an example of how that looks for your employee, the average employee is paying 37, has $37,000 a year uh, uh, towards their student loans. They're paying $426 a month. After 10 years, they're gonna pay back a little over $51,000 when you combine uh, interest on those payments um, and you know, the time that it takes. If you stepped in as an employer and just added $100 on top of their $426 a month payment, they're going to be paid off in eight years as opposed to 10, and their out-of-pocket is going to be $37,000 as opposed to $51,000. So that's $14,000 in savings uh, that you're giving them. We also see some instances where some employees are using their employer monthly payment to lower their monthly payment. So instead of you them paying an extra 100 bucks, they're using it to lower their payment, and they're using that extra money to buy groceries, to put more money towards their retirement plan, and manage other areas of their, of their lives uh, or put it towards higher interest credit card debt. And so there's a number of permutations on how your employees might wanna use this, um, but it's just amazing how we see so many different employees and employers um, take advantage of their employer contribution. Um, on your side, how you save is again, as I mentioned, uh, if you were to decide to give a dollar of extra cash to your employee, not only is it not going towards student debt or paying off debt, you have to pay taxes on it. Uh, if you're putting it towards a contribution like this, it's tax exempt. So this is just a high level example of an employer who's giving uh, $5,250 per employee. Again, that's the taxable limit. 
uh, what that contribution is going to be. That's going to be $787,000 that they're paying for all their employees uh, to, to, uh, for that year. The tax savings on that is $60,000, right? If they were to pay that same amount in salary, they would have to pay FICA tax on that, which is 7.65%. Not only that, their employee is paying federal and state tax. Because you're avoiding that in both instances, your tax saving is $60,000, which covers any fees associated with delivering a platform like this um, multiple times over. And again, one of the benefits is that your employee is also getting uh, an update. They're able to track exactly how much you're saving them by your contribution, and it's reinforced every single month so that they're constantly being informed that um, they that they, uh, they're constantly being informed every month about how amazing of a benefit this is and how awesome you are as an employer. Um, and again, we've seen retention rates in some instances as high as, as 40%. On the flip side, again, with the advisory platform, uh, we work with your employee to identify if they're eligible for different federal loan rebates. There's uh, every year $6 billion of federal rebates potentially uh, that people are eligible for get rejected because of resolvable paperwork issues or just not knowing where you stand. And so our job is to help your employees navigate and see what their options are, regardless of their credit score, regardless of their income, uh, regardless of, of where they work, is to really show them there's an option for everybody. So again, you don't want to just limit yourself to solutions that require good credit scores or good income because you're going to be discriminating, discriminating against a significant portion of your workforce potentially. Lastly, before we wrap up, um, one of the things I want to say is that some quick folks, people ask us is how many people will this impact my workforce? Like I don't think a lot of people have student debt. Typically about 25% of your workforce will have student loans themselves or uh, will have uh, in their name, either being that they took out the debt themselves or it was a parent plus loan that they borrowed for their kid. On average, employers give about $100 a month, so that's $1,200 per year per participant. And again, we've said, we've seen uh, employers have seen retention improvements upwards of 41%. Uh, we just did a case study with the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And what we saw was that on average, their employer turnover was 9.5%, um, you know, assuming an average salary is $60,000 and a 30% cost of turnover, for every 100 employees, it costs them about $171,000, right? Um, when we look at the turnover. When we looked at the turnover rate using PeopleJoy, it actually was reduced by five point, to 5.6%, which is a 41% reduction in turnover. So turnover costs went from 171,000 to 100,000, uh, about $100,000. And this was just using the voluntary benefit. So when you do the math on it, the business case, again, besides it just being the right thing to do for your employees, if you have the means to do it, it also makes a strong business case because it helps to attract uh, talent in greater numbers and more importantly, retain talent so you're not constantly plugging holes um, in your, in your uh, uh, you know, when, when hiring employees. Um, so that's, that's a, a, just get a quick update on the student loan space, the industry, where things are legislatively and, and some things that you can offer uh, to your employees um, and things to consider uh, in the road, especially as we go through this road to recovery. Um, so if you wanna learn a little bit more, if you want to, I can send the deck over, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. It's Emeka, E-M-E-K-A -E at peoplejoy.co or give me a call 267-603-7726. Uh, we're right, we're based in uh, University City and um, we're looking forward to, um, you know, answering any questions folks have, but otherwise, thank you for your time. I hope you, everybody walked away with a little something today. And again, we're absolutely passionate about uh, helping you attract and retain your employees and really think through um, different creative ways to, to provide financial wellness benefits. So thank you. Mecca, that was great. Thank you very much. Very informative for, I think, both individually as well as employers. Uh, just two questions. Let me get to these before you jump off. Um, you, you brought up the private financing and losing the um, federal loan benefits. Someone asked, would there be advantage for an, for somebody to kind of only do partial refinancings to do private but keep federal in the event that there was a change or, or is, that, is that a strategy you would say? Absolutely, yeah, so great question. So yeah, if, if, if you, if I would say, um, 
you know, first thing you want to say is what you're eligible for in terms of federal forgiveness. Uh, so one of the things we like to do is just run an analysis. At a minimum, they're talking about $10,000 of forgiveness. But again, the government already has forgiveness programs in place. So I would say uh, that that could be a great strategy to do a partial refinance, to keep just enough. So if you're eligible for forgiveness, that piece gets forgiven. If they decide down the road to wave a magic wand and forgive ten dollars to $50,000 of debt, um, definitely keep that. Definitely do not refinance before the payment suspension is lifted. Right now, any federal student loan is at 0% interest rate. So you, you can't beat 0% interest rate. So I would say sit tight. But definitely, yeah, I would, I would, my, my advice to borrowers is just wait out, wait and see, wait and see where the government decides to do as far as forgiveness. And then once they come out with something concrete, uh, then make a decision. But it's just not worth it right now to, to, to refinance and forfeit uh, any potential forgiveness that, that might be coming. Great. Um, and I think it's great. I didn't realize the SLRA now is an exempt, a tax exempt for the employer. Someone asked the question, which um, it, does it apply to a small employer that's using a simple IRA retirement? And I don't think it's tied to the IRA program. Right? It's not tied to the IRA. So, so today the, 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 con the tax deductible contribution is tied to towards employers making direct contributions uh, to student loans uh, and only student loans. So um it's not tied to the, the IRA today, but with the Secure 2.0 Act, uh, which again is pending, uh, if and when that bill gets passed, you would then, uh, regardless of whether it's a simple or a formal, you would then be able to make a, a, a contribution to a match. a match in lieu of your employee putting that dollar towards your student loans. Yeah, that's awesome. That'd be really helpful for a lot of people. All right. Well, uh, once again, uh, thank you. Like I said, uh, Emeka is a partner of ours. So if you have further information, reach out to him or, or contact us and we'll connect you with people. Joy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.